Hi friends, I originally had a completely different video planned for today but here's the thing, as I think every creator or wannabe creator as I am um, is currently struggling with the question do I not or do I talk about the coronavirus and quarantine and self-quarantine and everything else and how do I talk about it if I talk about it? Today I came to the conclusion that I do want to talk about it because when I thought of uploading a video that had nothing to do with it, it kind of felt fake and wrong and like I was pretending that nothing was happening. But it is, so I figured that I would talk about it and I would talk about it in a hopefully positive way and a helpful way because I do not want to spread panic, I do not want to spread any negative feelings or anything like that. So here I am to try and help you cope in a certain way. I thought one way to deal with self-isolating or really with just um, what the world is like right now, it would be fun to maybe recommend some short books for you to read. I know that many people currently do not have the attention span that they would like for like huge books, even though I am thinking about doing a video like that as well, and they would much rather read something short and less intimidating because the world is already intimidating as is so. I picked, I think, eight books that are all under 200 pages, so you could possibly also read them in a day if you really wanted to, um, but they should also be easier for your attention span <laughs> if you need something to distract yourself with. I'm gonna start with the one non-fiction thing that I have on here, which is extremely short. It's about 50 pages and it is Create Dangerously by Albert Camus. Everyone's reading The Plague by Albert Camus, I don't know why. Read this instead. Among other things, it's also about, it's just a co collection of speeches. The first one is the most important one, I would say, which is the title of this novel, novel, no, of this book as well. It is essentially about a person's needs to create. So if you're a creative person, this would probably be for you. It's very short and sweet. It talks about how to stay creative and whether a creative person art, creative, creative person's art, wow, I cannot speak, nothing new here, um, how a creative person's work should or should not reflect the current situation, political, economical, whatever. So I think it's also pretty topical. If you want to find a path or just inspiration to create in current times, so if you're a creative person, I would recommend this twice as hard because it might be helpful for you. Another one is an oldie but a goodie and that is Animal Farm by George Orwell. I have this in this very compact, small edition at about 150 pages. No, actually 112. This is 112, this edition. Um, this is obviously about an animal farm where the animals decide to overthrow their masters slash owners and about how that kind of society begins to look like eventually. Obviously, this is still topical, whether there's anything going on or not. Um, as we all know, it's Ariel Bassett's favorite book, so I'm assuming most of you have already read it, but if not, this would be a perfect um, opportunity because it would take your mind off of the current situation and remind you how fucked we are politically. <laughs> so that's something to consider, I suppose. Then I have something very lighthearted and fun. I was thinking about what kind of Neil Gaiman I should include because I do love Neil Gaiman and I think uh, his books are a great way to escape the real world. And I actually settled on Fortunately the Milk, which is middle grade, and it has pretty cute illustrations all throughout. This is also pretty, pretty short. And this is essentially about I don't know, a child, I don't remember if it's a boy or a girl or a non-binary person, about a child who is being taken care of by their dad because their mom is gone away, mom's away, <laughs> dad's in charge, and there's no milk. And this is essentially about the kids' um, experiences, fantastical imaginary experiences while they're home alone waiting for their dad to come back with milk. I mean, I don't think you get any more lighthearted than that. This is super whimsical, magical, and I really strongly recommend this if you just need something to take your mind off of things and, you know, just be carried away to a better place, better situation that is super lighthearted, nothing dangerous or negative happening in it. Then I have kind of a horror read, which is We Have Always Lived in a Castle by Shirley Jackson. This is not my favorite Shirley Jackson, but nonetheless, I think this is a very good book. This is about a family, uh, about sisters, I think. It's been quite a while since I read it, but this is about a sister... sister? <laughs> this is about um, Mary Cat specifically and they are kind of dealing with the aftermath of some of their family members dying tragically and the town kind of 
ostracizing and blaming the remaining family members and all the rumors that have ever sprung up and them just going about their daily lives. This is obviously modern classics, so it is not set in a current time. So even though it is a darker topic and there's like a plot twisty and horror-y stuff, it's still an escape of sorts. If you want something dark, but something that has nothing to do with our modern times. Another one is an underrated gem for me. I don't think I don't I don't think I've ever heard anyone talk about this book. And that is the Cement Garden by Ian McEwan. This was actually my first Ian McEwan that I ever read. This is about a family again whose parents die very suddenly and they the children have to deal with their daily lives as well. They don't know, they don't want anyone to figure out that they have been orphaned. They kind of, the oldest siblings kind of try and take care of the entire family by themselves. And it is not much about them being orphans as it is about them being pretty fucked up. So if you're in for like, I would say Lolita-esque, but it's not exactly about any kind of Lolita story. It's mostly just a vibe, but like a similar kind of fucked up vibe, including incest. This is the story for you. I just, I don't know how to recommend this book, but it's a very good piece of literary work. So I guess proceed with caution, I suppose. Another one is a classic that is also one of my favorite books and I cannot not mention it. And that is The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. This is obviously about Jake Gatsby and how much uh, he obsesses over a girl that he used to know once and throwing huge parties and the jazz scene and era and everything. This is probably one of the biggest works of the lost generation. So if you ever wanted to dip your fingers into F. Scott Fitzgerald or that kind of literature, I think this is a great opportunity to do so. I also hold the controversial opinion that the Baz Luhrmann movie from 2000 something with Leonardo DiCaprio is fucking great and I love the soundtrack choices. So if you don't want to read this, I can also recommend that movie to you. I think it's a... it's a something, <laughs> but I think you might enjoy it and it will definitely distract you because it's so loud and colorful and just out there so it might be kind of a cheer up for you you know then i have something that i also never heard anyone on booktube talk about and that is the underdog by marcus Zusak, who obviously wrote the book thief this is also under 200 pages it's very short i don't remember exactly what this is about and i know that i didn't love it but I thought it was interesting. I know it's about brothers and about one of the brothers trying to find love and feeling like the underdog and like nothing really working out for him in life. And I just think that if you ever liked The Book Thief, you might want to read something of the author's previous work. So I think maybe it's time that you should check it out. Just, just an idea, you know, just to explore one of our favorite writers because I know that a lot of people love Marcus Zusak for The Book Thief, so. This maybe is one that you could consider. And the last one is the only graphic novel on this list. I do not read graphic novels um, a lot, but this one I did pick up because I did enjoy the movie and that is Blue is the Warmest Color by Julie Moreau. I don't know how to say French names. I apologize to everyone. I'm sorry. Um, this is about a high schooler called Clementine who breaks up with her boyfriend because she finds she cannot connect to him emotionally or love him the way that he loves her. And then her gay best friend takes her to a gay bar and there she meets Emma and the rest is history. This is, I think the graphic novel is a lot more positive than the movie. I actually kind of prefer the graphic novel in some ways. It has a very, at least my edition, has a very tame art style, but the but Emma's hair is always blue and I thought it was such a nice touch. Uh, it's very desaturated almost, the art style, but I love it a lot and I love what this is trying to say. And yeah, it's obviously a quick read and maybe you could check it out, you know? It's one of my favorites for sure. Those were all those short books uh, that I wanted to wreck today to maybe help and distract you from what's happening in the world. I don't think I have many more short books that are under 200 pages really. So this is a collection that I kinda scrambled up from my bookshelves. I hope you enjoyed if you pick any of these up because if you didn't know, for example, Scribd, is doing a free one month trial where you do not have to enter any credit card uh, details. I will link you 
to their Instagram slash Twitter post down in the crotch. So maybe you could check that out. Maybe your library is renting these books, something. You can always also get ebooks, which are also doing pretty huge sales in some places. So you can get your hands on these or you could support your local bookstore that does deliveries because they need the money right now. <laughs> so maybe you could do any of those things and check these out or if you've had any of them on your shelf maybe it's time to pick them up to distract you and yeah i hope this was helpful if you read any of these please let me know if you like this video please leave a like also let me know because i don't know if this is the format that's the most helpful right now so please let me know please leave it a like and subscribe if you want to see more content from me that would be pretty awesome that's all from me for now and in true alan replay fashion i am signing off